So next question is how do you distribute the public keys? There are four ways, three of them are in this slide. One method is public announcement. You could put it on your website saying that this is my public key. And anybody who wants to talk to you can use that public key for you. And many people's website have that pub their public key. But what prevents from somebody else putting a fake website and saying that here it is, you know, here is, you know, my public key and I am so and so, I am Raj Jain. Right? How do you trust that this website is Raj Jain's website? Right? So that is not a good idea. And the second thing is publicly available directory. So MIT tried this. MIT put a website where you can go and register your public key. So you can go to that one and say, what is Rajan's public key? And they will tell you what is Rajan's public key. But anybody can fake that. I mean, they really have to come to check me out and you know, figure out that I am the one who is registering. And that process became very painful for them to verify that only Rajan can register as Rajan. Right? So, so that is no longer actually I don't think I have seen that used very much then people said well anybody can be used as an authority public key authority and um, and then if we know the public key for the authority then we can use that so here's the method A goes to the authority and says look I want to talk to B and instead of a noun says the time T1 so that it cannot be replayed this request isn't clear. Then B says, here is your public key, certified public key for B. So this is encrypted. This is encrypted with the private key of the authority. And uh, so this gives you, once you can decrypt it, because this person knows the public key of the authority. So they can decrypt it and they can get public key of B request T1 just request T1 is repeated back so that you know what time the request was sent. A anybody actually can decrypt this because everybody knows the public key of authority. Then A sends to B saying that look here it is me I am A my answer is N1 and I want to talk to you. Then B can decrypt it and then it can say well before it can decrypt it, it goes to the authority and says, what is the public key of A? Time is T2, what is A's public key? And then the answer comes back, the public key for A is this. So, and then it can just use that to respond back, giving it back its nonce and giving a new nonce and then the A returning back the nonce. Okay? So this is the first idea that came into people's mind that why don't we have some authority whose key everybody knows, whose public key everybody knows. The only problem in this method, this method works, but the only problem is that when A wants to talk to B, the authority has to be up. If authority is not up, I can't find B's public key. And if authority is under maintenance, no communication can take place. They said, okay, hold on. Let's not do this. Let's just keep certificates available to everybody, anytime. And that is what is generally used and that is called public key certificate. So actually public key certificates have existed, are pub, not public key, the certificates have existed for a long time. Everybody has a passport, which is a certificate, certifies that you are Raj Jain, you know, or I am Raj Jain, and you know, all the things about me. That's a certificate. Similarly, driver's license is another certificate. Right? If somebody wants to prove that, I just show them my driver's license and, and the bank gives me a million dollar loan, right? So that's a certificate. And um, so those certificates existed because the, we could verify the certificate mostly visually. You look at the driver's license, it looks like a driver's license, and, uh, and they put some lens and everything else and they say, oh yeah, it looks good. You, you are all set, right? But those methods are subject to forgery. But anyway, same thing then in digital world is that if you have a certificate, then you can show it to anybody and they can verify that it's you. Okay? So it binds the authority, so it binds the identity to public key. So that means it is signed by the trusted, trusted public key authority or certificate authority, CA. So we will be using the name CA quite a bit from now on. CA is the, is the authority that's issued the certificate. For example, driver license is issued by who? A state. And the passport is issued by? Federal government. So those are the authorities. 
The U.S. Passport Office is one authority, and the Missouri Department of Motor Vehicle is another authority. Somehow we all think that we know their, you know, everything else, but in this case it has to be proven, right? So those are certificate authorities. So anybody who knows the public key of this, everybody knows actually, and so if they know it, they can verify the certificate. A goes to certificate authority and says, Hi, hey, I am A, here is my ID, here is my name, and, and this one is actually, and then they will send you the certificate. Now this one is not as trivial as shown here because there's a lot of checking goes on here at this point. They will, if you go to the Department of Motor Vehicle, they will ask your birth certificate and your pictures and this and that. So after a lot of certification, they will give you that, okay, here's your certificate. And that certificate is simply an encrypted message with, which is encrypted with the private key of the authority the time is there, ID of A is there, and the PO is there. So it says this was given on August 17, 19, uh, 2010, and generally has a lifetime saying that good for next four years. Right. In our digital world, this would be good for next four minutes or something, rather than four years. But in the analog world, things are so difficult to produce that they cannot do it every four minutes. So they are good for four years. Similarly, B can go any time and say, here is my you know, credentials, and it gets a certificate. Now, A and B have a certificate, and they can talk at any time without having the certificate authority being there. Right? When A wants to talk to B, all it does is it says, hey, here's my public key, here's my certificate with my public key, and B goes, and here's my certificate with my public key. And um, basically, the certificates can be verified and um, the private keys are private with A and B get from the certificate authority but they don't tell anybody else and then they can decrypt the messages coming to them and that's just, that is what is done today when you know we do any communication in the real world so to do this whole certificate business possible there are the method that is that is has been developed is called PKI PKI is the public key infrastructure Public key infrastructure is used to find the public keys and S-MIME, PZP, SSL, all of them use, and, and, and even asymmetric cryptography, all of them use P PKI. So there are certificate authorities and there are standards for certificates. So all of this has been developed. And the standard is called 509. X.509 is the ISO standard for certificate formats. However, the standards are, whenever they develop a standard, you need to, you need, people need to get together and, and narrow down the options because the standards generally specify all options possible. So for example, a standard will say, select a signature algorithm. All signature algorithms are okay. All right, now if I select, you know, one of the 500 signature algorithms, you select one of the 500 signature algorithms, we cannot talk to each other because you know, we selected different signature algorithms. So the industry has to get together and narrow down the choices and say, look, everybody will implement two signature choices, MD5 and SHA-1, that's it. Even though the standard allows any, you will select only two. Everybody will have to select two, and that way the chances of matching is higher. Right, actually 100%, if also everybody implements two, you get an So for every standard, whether it is Wi-Fi standard, whether it is Ethernet standard, whether it is X509, after the standard is done, the industry meets one more time, or actually many more times, and narrows down the choices that are allowed by the standard to the one that should be implemented. So you get an implementable standard. So PKIX is that. PKIX is the IETF working group and PKI, and it adopted 509 and a subset of its options. So wherever it says this is a, this, these are the choices, it just narrowed it down. And therefore it is called a profile of X509. So you could say, well, I follow 509, and I could say I follow 509, but we may not be able to talk to each other. But if you say I follow PKIX, and I, and, and I also say I follow I, PKIX, then we can both talk. Guaranteed. Because the standard allows many, many options, PKIX narrows down those options. So, TLS, IPSEC, 
smart cap, everything that we know about table labs, they all use 509. So 509 is a worldwide standard and it is used everywhere. And so every computer that you have in front of you has a roots, has a list of root certificates. What is a root certificate? A root certificate is a certificate that is issued by the person himself. So how, so for example, I get a driver's license which is signed by the Department of Motor Vehicle of Missouri. But who signs the Department of Motor Vehicle of Missouri? They themselves sign it. So how do we know that they, nobody else is becoming the Department of Motor Vehicle? Because that thing is built into our computer. So nobody can, so basically, so the, the root certificates are built into our computer. So in our computer, if you open your computer, and like I opened my computer, I found many, many root certificates already built in. All right, so there are many root, many companies that can give you a certificate and each of these companies has approached Microsoft or Apple or you know whichever computer you use and said look here's my certificate and, and they gave all the proof and then the Microsoft put that certificate in your computer and you keep updating it every week actually but basically so that certificate has the public key for that authority and you can trust that that public key is good if that public key is good then you can trust other certificates based upon that Make sense? That somewhere this chain of certification has to stop. So I am trusting you because the Department of Motor Vehicles said so, but how do we know that this is the Department of Motor Vehicles? Because Microsoft told me. That's why. Now, how do we know Microsoft told me? Somebody else could make it up. So that's possible. But um, so all the certificates are kept in your computer. And if you go to your computer, in this case I have used them. Um, <coughs> Firefox, but the same thing appears in Internet Explorer. You could go into the security section and you could see all these certificates and I have shown you one part here which shows very sign. And if you open that, this is from Internet Explorer by the way, this particular slide, the previous one was from, uh, from um, uh, Firefox. But if you open any certificate, then you will find that uh, this says very sign issued by very sign. So this is a root certificate. So verify sign is verifying that you know this is a public key. If you open that public key, you will find that if you open the certificate, find that the version is version three. So five zero nine has gone through version one, two, and three. So this is version three. Serial number is this is the serial number of the certificate that they have issued. Signature algorithm is this. Issuer is themselves. It was started. It was given out on this date. It is good for the next 30 years, and that it is. Um, and this is for the very sign. And the public key is here. If you click on this one, it will show you the public key, real public key. 2048 bits. Version number is V3. Serial number of um, this company's certificate is this. So what happens is, suppose very sign issues certificate for Raj Jain it will have a number one. I go again and get another certificate that will have number two for me. So this is the serial number of the subject's key. This is the serial number of the CA. CS, CA has issued millions of certificates, so this number is very high. And this is the serial number of the subject's key, signature algorithm again, and then issuer, valid, blah, blah, blah. So like that, you can find many different fields which are listed here. And basically the notation is whenever we write CA double angle bracket A means that this is a certificate for A signed by CA. That's the notation. And again just like KDC you have a hierarchy. Suppose you want to talk to somebody in Russia. In Russia they don't have very sign, hopefully they don't have. Then how do you talk to them? Right? They don't know very sign signature. So then there has to be some kind of hierarchy their very sign has signed up with that and and then the Russian certificate authority has signed up and somewhere you meet so each other certificate can be validated. Anyway, so X509 is in version 3 and some of the things that were missing in the previous version were email, URLs, policies 
and so on and so forth. Now, here's the thing. When we know each other, we know more by the email than anything else. Most people, you know, out of this room, when they know Raj Jain, all they know is from email. And X509 was not designed to use email anywhere in the certificate. And um, they actually used something called um, X500, X500 name, which um, actually will show up um, somewhere. Um, it didn't show up here. So anyway, so X500 names are very difficult to read, and I will show you an example somewhere in, in a minute. But X500 uh, names are there, and people said that's not very helpful. We really need email. So what version 3 has done is that instead of add, adding new fields like email, URL, and so on and so forth, they just said you can add whatever field you need and by using this extension method, which is you say extension identifier and the criticality indicator, how critical it is. It means you know if somebody doesn't understand this, what should they do with the certificate? And then the extension value. So it could be, for example, email, and the value could be jan at acm.org. And the criticality indicator is basically is whether to throw away the certificate if I don't know this or to ignore the field if I don't know this field. So people are putting new fields. Other people may not know those fields. And so there are two choices. Either you throw away the whole certificate if you don't know the field. That will be indicated by the criticality indicator. Or you ignore that field. So the extensions are like serial number of the CA keys, subject, we already saw the subject serial number, what this key is good for, whether it is good for email, whether it is good for business, whether it is good for banking, and so on and so forth. And um, another thing is that you can have alternate name. So for example, you could have a DNS name, jain at acm.org, or you could have rajjain.com. Um, and then there are other attributes. There are lots of extensions for 509. 